Good morning. Today I heard a story on the news about a girl who committed suicide because a sex video she had made and sent to a few friends then went viral. Went viral, you know. This means it went to many places on the internet and could be seen by millions of people. Her mother is now trying to get some control over the internet to be able to delete videos or other material. So I would like to talk about this subject today. What can we learn from this story? First of all, what about the mother's attempts to get some control over the internet? Do you think that will be possible? In my own opinion, I think it is very unlikely. I think it is more likely that people have to accept that anything they put on the internet automatically becomes public property. Even if you send something only to your friends, there is no guarantee that they may not then make it public. So the number one lesson to learn here is to be very careful about what you put on the internet. This situation really is not much different to what used to happen before the internet. People might send photos, letters or other material to each other and there was always the possibility that the receivers may do something damaging with the material. But in those days it was much more difficult to be able to reach millions of people. Nowadays the internet allows us to spread information freely extremely quickly and this leads to more danger. Of course it is not a new thing. People or organizations attacking other people through some kind of media. Political parties do this all the time. In America for example political parties especially during a campaign will spend millions of dollars trying to damage the reputation or standing of their opposing parties. But most people are not willing to spend a lot of money doing this. However, the internet provides them with a platform. It does raise the question about why people are mean and nasty. And I wonder why people have such low morals when using the internet. I suppose one reason is because they are mostly anonymous. They can put material on the internet without other people knowing it is them who has done it. So this enables them to avoid blame. So are people basically only good when they think they might be caught and punished? Probably. Probably, generally speaking, it's wise to assume that people, if they can get away with it, may well do bad things. And what about the girl? Why did she take the very drastic step of taking her own life? I have to assume that it was because of shame or embarrassment a strong feeling that other people are going to look down upon her. I find it a little bit surprising that in this day and age a girl or anyone would be so fearful of this shame or embarrassment. You can see all kinds of fairly risque photos and videos on social web social media like Facebook and YouTube people are clearly far less shy than they used to be before the internet and they may even relish the idea of shocking other people with some titillating pictures or videos of themselves
I imagine, though, that this girl came from a very conservative society where shame is still a very real emotion. I think we should observe that shame is entirely a human construct, meaning it is created by society. It is the response to your desire to be accepted by other people, not seen as some kind of outcast or pariah. I am sure it does not exist in the animal world. So you could say that this girl was a victim of one of society's values, the value that expects people to behave in certain ways, and hence the feeling of shame can manifest itself when you do not behave in that way. If we ask who is to blame for the girl's death, I would more likely say it is society's conservative values rather than the internet. I suspect that most people want to keep the internet quite free. They want to use it as a public platform to share information and ideas and I think in the future there will be strong opposition to anyone trying to have strong general rules controlling the internet. I think what could be seen as more shameful is the presumably lack of support for this girl by people in her community. People who should have tried to persuade her that this was really a silly story and nothing to worry about too much and to give her a sense of perspective to see that this experience was just one in her life and there were many more of great value to make her life meaningful and continue to be joyful. What about personal relationships nowadays? Is everybody afraid to let their partner take a sexy picture of themselves for fear they may end up as some in unintended internet star? Yes, I suspect this is true, which raises the question of trust in relationships. Who can we trust? Can we trust people less than before? And is this damaging relationships? From the very beginning, are people worried about the likely future behavior of their partner? Probably, unfortunately. Yes, this is probably true. So the internet, while having given us enormous opportunities to share and find information, has also got its downsides. For me personally, I would be trying to explain and investigate this problem in more detail by looking at the sense of shame we have, something which is inculcated with us from birth when we are gradually taught to be social beings, to be members of society. If you try to imagine yourself in a really embarrassing or shameful situation, can you then explain rationally your feelings? I think you may find it is difficult because these feelings have been inculcated in us from a very early age. But I think we should fight them. We should not accept being a prisoner of emotions which we did not construct. You certainly should never get anywhere close to the behavior of this poor girl who ended up taking her own life. You should try to find ways to weaken these harmful emotions. But at the same time, don't forget to be careful about what you do on the internet. Bye for now.